Thank you very much. Yeah. Is this on? Yes? Hi, everybody. I think sometimes, first of all, thank you very much. Amazing to presentations. Thank you. But uh, we have good news and bad news because much of what I was preparing to talk is much of what Luis has done in such an amazing way. But I'm going to be trying to bring other points of view, other sides. And usually I was thinking that I came here prepared with a jacket. And sometimes to change things in a big way or in a small way, sometimes only requires things like this. I'm taking my jacket off. <laughs> I'm rolling my sleeves. And I'm going to say, today I'm going to start making a difference. This is very much what happened over two years ago when I was with my family in the Cayman Islands, having an amazing vacation by the beach, anything I wanted to drink, eat, enjoying life to its most amazing way. The earthquake hit. And there you are, enjoying this amazing earth that has been given to us by someone above. And others are suffering barely kilometers away from where you were, laughing and swimming and scuba diving and playing golf. So I don't know why, why I'm taking the action to change. I don't do it because I want to feel better. I don't know if I want to do it because I really believe we need to be giving the same options to everyone, the same options you have, we have. But I do believe that, at the very least, if I don't do it because I'm a good person and I want to change the world, at the very least, I'm going to try to change the world in an egocentric way. I have children, and I want them to enjoy a world 50 years from now that is peaceful and has a future. And the only way to help my children to enjoy a future and enjoying this earth is by making sure that every other children will have the same options to enjoy the life my children are, enjoying, are living today. But at the very least, that's the reason I'm doing it. So let me tell you very quick. We're going to be talking about fire, and we're going to be talking about food, and we're going to be talking about cook stoves. But the truth is, if you tell me today what is more important, the food we produce, or how we cook that food, and what energy we are going to be using, I'm going to be telling you that the food we eat and how we produce that food is important. But I believe it's even more important the energy we're going to be using to produce that food. We've been cooking with fire for hundreds of thousands of years. Over a million years that we know that man has used fire to cook. They will have a piece of meat, a fire, they will throw it. It's so funny that over a million years later, it's still here in America, every Sunday, the men will make the fire with charcoal and will throw the steak on the top to cook it. We didn't advance much, if you think about it. We may have Google, and we may have internet, and we may have anything we want, the top technology, but we didn't change much. But the fun thing is that while us here in America, we are doing every Sunday the simple piece of meat, cook over charcoal, something of pleasure, of show our power that we can cook as men. And we can spend the money on the charcoal and the money in the most expensive steak. It's people in other parts of the world that for them to find that charcoal, almost they put their lives in danger for, and they barely can afford it, and they barely have money to buy that food. We may do the same, but we do it for different reasons. And the effort that we have to do here to light the fire only takes us a second. For people to light a fire, sometimes it takes them days. And we have to change that. And this is where the alliance of clean stoves comes in. Secretary Clinton organized the Alliance of Clean Stoves over a year ago, was announced at the Clinton Global Initiative. And very recently, I was 
very proud to be named ambassador of the Alliance of Clean Cook Stoves. But as you see, this is not a title that I should only help because we have amazing people like Luis and so many other thousands around the world really trying to move forward these clean cook stoves. And I'm going to try to prove even further to you, if Luis didn't do that well enough, of why this is important in so many ways. The photos you're going to be seeing here are used to try to go with a conversation. This was a photo, uh, a photo montage we did on an amazing time I spent in Haiti with three friend photographers and with Manolo Vilches, who is here with us, came from Barcelona, one of the guys that knows about solar cooking the most in the entire world. So this is only to keep me going with the conversation. One thing that is an important message to remember is that we have nearly 3 billion people using polluting inefficient stoves or open flames to cook their foods every day. And you may say, OK, I also cook with charcoal every other day, every Sunday, as I told you before. What's the issue with this? Well, we have people that they cook with charcoal or with wood because they have no other option. You have gas at home. You have electricity. You want a hot glass of milk. You put it on the microwave. You want a simple plate of rice. You light the burner, and you are cooking in a second. Wow. You know the power that we have? You know how lucky we are? Those children that you see are even older. But many children don't even have an option to decide if they want to be next to the cook soaps outside. Because those children are month. And the mother doesn't have the babysitter that maybe my wife has. The mother has to have the children next to her. Because she doesn't have a crib where to put the children on. Those children and the mother, as they are doing something so simple, but so important as cooking to feed the family, they have no option but already being sick and becoming asthmatic because they are inhaling every single fume. They don't want to be smokers. They don't want to be unhealthy. But you and I, will have the option. They don't. And we have to change that. So the other day, I was reading a blog because we announced that I was ambassador. And my wife mentioned to me, wow, take a look at the comment on this blog. The blog said, 2 million people die every year? Who cares? People die of smoke, too, of cigarettes. For that reason, America helps create an alliance in partnership with the United Nations. Because 2 million people die every year? Yes, was the opinion of one. But sometimes it's amazing. When we talk about communication, yes, we need to be doing one type of communication. It's telling every single person in Europe, in America, in the countries that we live a very comfortable life, that actually one person dying from a smoke is one person too many. We start bringing down the expectations and the meaning of death, or it seems that because two million people die every year, why well, it's not so much, it's not five. This really touched me. Luism show these amazing photos of this woman carrying the wood. This woman won't go alone into the mountains because they don't have the money to buy the charcoal because they have to decide between I buy the rice or I buy the fuel. They are alone in the middle of nowhere. They are alone in the middle of nowhere and what happens? Their security is not really there. They can be raped. They can be injured because they are in the middle of the wild. And they leave home sometimes for many kilometers away to gather wood and to gather fuel. But for them, the simple thing for you and for me as lighting the match or lighting the fire 
with a one second move. The same process takes them hours, every single day of their lives. Young girls and boys spend sometimes over 20 hours collecting that fuel. 20 hours, people, what it takes us less than 30 seconds every week. Boom, fire. Boom, a cigarette. Microwave, a glass of hot water. 20 hours. If we want these people to have an option in their lives, or we start making sure that these hours are put into education, in giving them hope, we'll never move forward. So imagine how important it is to be using clean cook stoves. Use clean stoves will give an option to those young ladies to have a proper education that will give them, maybe give them a chance to make it in the world. So we know that these clean stoves can be saving money for the families. Because then the charcoal they're going to be using, and I don't want to get very technical, is going to be reduced a lot. And hold on, we are talking about using charcoal and using wood. But if they are able to reduce by 60, 70 percent the money they spend, the use of the charcoal, and so the money they spend, they will have money for food, they will have money for education, they will have money for clothing, they will have money to improve their homes. They will have extra money to live the life that every single human being deserves. But then we need to be going further, and that's why this communication has to be more. When we talk about a cook stove, if you think about it, the cook stove has been at the heart of humanity. Because that cook stoves is what has been in feeding humanity for centuries. So the cook stoves, I don't only see it as the place you cook and as the place you gather family, but you need to see it almost like an amazing, amazing possibility to find in synergies with anything you dream of. Creating jobs. If we are in Haiti, and I'm about to go also next, in two weeks, with President Clinton to Haiti for, for um, eight, nine days to put forward one of the first projects I'm actually uh, doing on the field. We have to start making those clean cook stoves in those same countries we are trying to help. Because by building the factories, we employ people. By employing people, we empower those people with salaries, with jobs, giving them pride in the country they live, in the community they live. And it starts closing the circle. One of my biggest, I'm one of the biggest fans of Mohammed Yunus. We need to stop throwing money at the problem. People are hungry. Let me throw them money. They eat tomorrow. What happened the next week? So from now on, we need to start investing into the solutions. Even if sometimes it's a harder thing to do. But this is the only way we can have future. So if at the same time we're thinking that the clean cook stoves are the right way to proceed, let's also be smart and invest part of the money in creating those little factories that will employ people, that will bring hope to the communities. Because people don't want our pity. People want risk pet. They don't want our charity. They only want a chance to someone show them where the door is for a better tomorrow. Creating those factories, the perfect scenery of believing in clean cook stoves. Are you with me? And so clean cook stoves are, we have many, many of them. This is not going to be a technology class on cook stoves. Even I invite you to know more about them. But it's very amazing brains that are developing very successful ones and sometimes produce very inefficient. This is what we call the rocket stove. Uses wood, can use charcoal. But this way, 
we are reducing the consumption of, of this wood. We have these ones that even use a little uh, fan that use biomass. Now we are making briquettes out of paper. We are making pellets out of the organic matter that you find in the floor in the middle of the forest. So here are many. But the truth is that if we start reducing the amount of charcoal and wood that the people of the world are using right now, in a place like Haiti, we can be helping the environment. How? We cut trees, right? We make charcoal. Trees disappear from the country. Haiti is 98% total deforestation. What happens when the rainy season comes? Rain is celebration. In Haiti, more often than not, sometimes rain means death. Why? Because when the water comes, and there's no trees left in the mountains, those mountains become very much like they don't take the water. They become almost like if we were cascades that take the water toward the lowlands. And by taking the water, the water takes away homes, takes away lives, and even worse, takes away the good fertile soil that is the only option for these people to plant a seed, a seed that will produce the food that will feed those people tomorrow. So a clean cook stove helps the environment because we will give an option to those trees to one day grow. That water will go into the goodness of the earth, bringing back life to a place like Haiti. Briat Sabran, one of the biggest food philosophers in the history of mankind, in 1826, he wrote a book. And he had commandments. He said, tell me what you eat, and I'll tell you who you are. But his biggest, most amazing phrase was, the future of the nations will depend on how they feed themselves. I believe maybe it's almost time to do the upgrade of that powerful phrase and almost transform it into the future of the world will depend on what energy and clean cook stoves they will use. My name is Jose Andres, and I only want to be part of trying its solutions that work for a better world tomorrow. Thank you very much.